Hello, welcome back. A um, couple things I haven't told. Well, we're back to talk about cutting and combining joining primitives. Um, we did the die exercise, which taught you how to cut directly from the face. Um, I'm going to show you how to manage that if your object if you want to like cut from a spear or cut from a torus, you can't do it the same way because there's no flat face on those figures. And so you can't do it directly on the shape. Before I get into that, I wanted to show you something I've been remiss in showing you. Suppose you want to get to a project you've already created. Um, you're hopefully saving um, and it saves the design basically in Fusion's Cloud. To get back to one of those, you show the data panel. It's this little lawful icon. Um, and when that's here, you can see all of the projects I've been doing. Um, so we're actually going to do a mug right now. Um, and I'll talk about that a little more. Uh, and another one that uses the, no, I'm not going to show you that. So let, let's talk about the mug a little bit. Um, so you'll notice that the mug started with a cylinder, but one of the fancy things about it is that it's got curved edges up here. That's called a bevel. So I should be showing you how to do that with this project. Um, hopefully you can recognize that this, um, handle here is half of a torus. It's not the full torus because it's not sticking inside. So. We will be making a cylinder, cutting it with another cylinder, and then making a torus separately, cutting half of it off and moving it in. And let me see. So there's two bodies here, basically the cylinder of the mug and the handle on the outside. I'm going to close this so we can get started and do it ourselves. So I think you saw that I started with a cylinder. Um, I'm going to draw that on the floor. And I think I'm going to draw it so, whoops, let me hit escape. I want to draw it so the center of it is at the origin. Oh, that was totally wrong. Cancel. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Floor, center, and I want to draw it so it's tangent to these, which is probably 100. I'm just going to type in 100. Um, so you can see that's my base cylinder. I'm going to pull it up to 90. So you could either pull it yourself if you want it super accurate, as I do. I'm going to hit 90. Remember that number 90? We're going to need to use that value when we're making the torus. Um, okay, so we have a cylinder. And I'm going to type sil1. Okay. So we actually want to cut into that. So it's going to be similar to when we made the die. So I'm going to create a cylinder and I'm going to click the top face of, of our original cylinder. Now I'm going to flip to the top and you can see that it will allow you to center your next cylinder. So I'm going to drag that out. Hmm, 80 might be good. Let's make an 90 is definitely too skinny. So 80 is good because it leaves a nice rim for the mug or a nice, you know, wall for the mug. Um, and then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to change my orientation. Actually, I can go back to home. So right now it looks like it's going to add a cylinder on top of this, which we could do. But we don't want it. We want to cut down into it. So when I push down this way, you can see that that red part's going to cut out and it's it's um, verified here where it says cut. 80 is a good number because remember our height of the whole cylinder is 90. So that leaves me 10 millimeters, which is equivalent of one centimeter at the bottom. So I'm pretty happy with that and I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> and basically the cup part of my mug is done. So here's the tricky part. Um, I'm going to move, whoops. Whoa, let me hit a home again. I'm going to pan to the side a little bit. 
And what I need to do is create a torus. Um, because that's going to be my handle. So I'm going to create the torus on a wall so that I won't have to rotate it too much when I want to move it into the cup. So I'm going to create torus. I'm going to click this wall. And hmm, I think I'll make it 80. Actually, the reason I want to make it 80 is because you have to make it less than 90 for the handles to fit. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to make it 75. Actually, I'm going to make it 70. And I'm going to hit OK. And I want to make it a little skinnier. So I can either push this into 10 or you can come over here and hit 10. And if I look at this from the front point of view, I will be able to push that into here. I'm going to right click on it, move copy and pull it down so they're at similar heights. But see, I don't want to do this because then you're left with half of the cylinder inside. So I actually have to cut that in half. Um, so I'm going to keep it out here, click OK, and then I have to cut it in half. Before I do that, I'm going to rename this handle. Now, so here's the deal. When we cut that cylinder, the inner cylinder from the outer cylinder, we were able to, when we started our, um, when we started the process of having the inner cylinder created, we clicked the top of the cylinder so we could draw directly on it. We can't do that with the handle. I'm going to be using a box to cut. I can't really click this because there's no plane on it. Um, so what I've just done is I clicked this same wall. I'm going to hit escape for a second. But just so you know, the drawing directly on top of something only works um, when you're when you have a flat face. And we don't have a flat face, so I can't do that here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle into a box independent of the torus and then move them together. So let's go to create box. I can actually click the floor. I'm going to change it to this level because I want to make sure that my rectangle is big enough to cover half of that. So that's big enough for the base dimension. I'm going to flip that was a bad direction to flip in. Let's try flipping in this direction. Let's just go home and go to the right. So now I want this to make sure it's at least as tall as the box. And if I go back like this, you can see that I'll be able to cover half of the torus with my rectangle. So this is a good size rectangle. Um, and so what you're going to see me do is I'm going to move that rectangle so it covers half of the torus. Then I'm going to cut the rectangle away. So I'm going to type box here. I'm going to type, this is the box we're going to cut. So that's called the cut box. Again, you guys don't have to name things as I do. I'm doing it <clears throat> mostly from it. So you'll have a better handle on things from a teaching perspective or learning perspective. Okay, I want to move the box, which means I actually have to have the whole thing selected. So again, I'm going to right click and move copy. I'm going to go back to the top view because that's always how I like starting. And I'm going to move it so it looks like it's taking up most of the handle. I'm going to cut just less than half of it. So the top half's covering it. I'm going to flip it this way. I can see that it's covered completely from here. And I can see that it's also covered this way. So I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go back to the home view. And then I'm going to move it a little bit and zoom it a little bit. So basically, if I cut away this box, it's going to take the part of the handle that we can't see, which is exactly what we want to do. But, and so to do this, we have to use the combine. There's a there's a command called combine and it's underneath the modify menu. Now it seems counterintuitive to use combine because combine 
indicates that you're going to join two things together. But the combined menu actually has three different operations. It has the join, which is what it sounds like because you're combining, but it also has the cut. So our operation is going to be a cut. The target body is what you want to keep. So our handle is the target body. Our tool body is what you're going to use to modify the target body. So that's the box. Now notice when I click that, because I'm in the cut operation, it's showing that um, it's going to take all of that away. Also, keep your eye on these two bodies here. We have the handle and the cut box. As soon as I click OK, the cut box completely disappears, and I'm left with just the handle. Um, so rewind if you need to see that process again. But that is the way you can use half a cylinder. Um, sorry, half a torus. You could do that to get a semi-sphere. Um, so we'll, we'll work on more of that in a moment. For now, what I want to do, there's two things left I have to do to complete my monk. I have to, um, sorry, I need to see something. I have to move my handle and I have to add a bevel. So I'll start by moving my handle. I can, might not be able to right click on that. I should select the handle. Right click move. As I usually do, I'm going to click to the top face and I'm going to pull it in this direction. I'm going to have a slight intersection. That way I know they're secure. I'm now going to look at it from my different view perspectives. And so this needs to be moved down. It's kind of snapping funny. So I'm going to try negative five. That looks like it's centered from top to bottom, so I'll hit, I won't hit enter yet, but let me switch sides this way. And it looks like it's pretty centered there. So I'll go back to the home view and hit enter. And my handle is nicely attached. I have to stop there because my recording time's about to run out, but um, most of the mug's done. I will come back and show you how to bevel.